core of uh, the current water crisis uh, uh, in the province? You know, um, w we occasionally worry about water, and when we do, we talk about uh, environmental issues and climate change, and we need big projects, we need to spend billions of rand. What this project has shown us is we also need to give real priority to operating and managing what we have better. We need to look after what we've got. We need to use it properly. We need to use it intelligently. And so what's really come under the spotlight in this particular event has been our failure to prepare uh, to manage what isn't a, a particularly unlikely set of events, a power failure here, uh, some cable theft there. Uh, these are things that we should be expecting, we should be prepared for, and I think it's very concerning that an organization like Randwater, 110 years old, it's older than South Africa, it's a really good organization that they should have been caught with their pants down and not able to manage uh, the incidents they've suffered over the past week. Now, Mike, you talk uh, largely of what you term failure to prepare. Now, is this a governance problem? Is it a skills problem? Is it a leadership problem? You know, uh, first let me start by saying I do not believe it's a skills problem. South Africa has the skills, and I need to emphasize, because as soon as you say skills, people think that you're talking about white or black. Let's be clear, there's black skills and there's white skills in South Africa who are able to manage the kind of uh, operations that Randwater has. So I don't think it's a skills problem. I do think that perhaps it's a governance and leadership problem. I think at the top end of the business, you've got boards composed of people who perhaps don't have operational experience. They're very strategic. They're very high level. They uh, are very good at those big issues. But none of them seem to have the kind of operational experience that might have said, Let's, we better ask the management, do we have a contingency plan? Mm -hmm. And I wonder also whether some of the top executives who, who are in there, who've been brought in sometimes from other sectors, actually have got the experience in the water sector to know what can go wrong and how you need to deal with it. So I think there is a, a governance problem from the board side. They should have asked the right questions. They clearly didn't. And if they didn't, they got the answers. The answers were wrong. And at the top leadership, I think we haven't seen enough uh, preparation in terms of contingency planning and organization. Just one indication of this. Mm -hmm. It's wrong for the minister to have to announce 10 days after this problem started that a joint committee is going to be set up to, to deal with it. Mm -hmm. If you're dealing properly with, let's call it disaster management or crisis management, one of the first things you do, and it's part of our South African disaster management system, mm -hmm. you call together a joint operations committee and mm -hmm. you bring all the people from, whether it's the electricity people, the city people, the water people, you bring them together and say, Let's knock heads, let's work out what needs to be done, and let's make sure we can do it. Yeah. And that wasn't done for 10 days, and that is very concerning to me. But, Mike, could then uh, this uh, crisis that we are facing in Kauteng, could it be symptomatic of uh, similar, uh, similar problems that may emerge in other uh, provinces? Well, look, we already have some water problems in other provinces. And, you know, sometimes they silly things. Uh, but they all to do with this failure to look forward, to failure to, to sort of uh, forecast or uh, consider what could happen. So you had the very f sad case of Beaufort West in the middle of the Karoo, waiting until their dam was dry one Christmas and then saying, oh, the dam's dry, we've got no water. You remember, they were asking people who drove from Johannesburg to Cape Town, please to leave some water in Beaufort West as they drove through. We've had Nelson Mandela Bay, which has a plentiful supply of water through the tunnels from the Orange River. Um, but they decided they didn't want to use it because they were hoping to build something different. And so they didn't uh, prepare the pipeline to, to bring it into town. And when there was a drought, they ran out of water. And a couple of factories closed down because of that. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing a failure. And it's quite often, as you correctly say, a leadership failure. We're seeing a failure to look at the future, look at the risks that might be faced and take the right action and quite often it's because people are more interested in the big projects and the big strategic issues than simply asking the technicians what mm -hmm. do we need to do how can we do it what help do you need what then needs to be done uh, ne uh, needs to be done to achieve water security well there's a lot of interventions that are necessary for water security because remember 
Uh, this particular crisis was called, caused by operational problems for Rand Water. There's other operational pro uh, problems faced by the cities of Ekuruleni and, and, and Johannesburg. With you know, They're not controlling their leaks. They've got a lot of excessive demand that they're not controlling. We also need to make sure that there's water in the dams uh, and, and in the rivers. And for that, we need to do planning, which is the de Department of Water's responsibility. And all of those people need to be continually walk working together, talking to each other, understanding what their problems are. And uh, it's no one single intervention that will work, but it does require leadership. And every now and again, it requires the leadership to ask of the people in the sector are we doing the right things? Have we considered the future risks? And what more do we need to do? And from leadership and government side, what can we do to help you to do the right thing? All right, Mike, thanks again for your time. That was the visiting professor in the Graduate School of uh, Public and Development Management at the